I remember back in 2003 when my aunt took me to see The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, and I was absolutely enthralled. At that time, I was also deathly, deathly afraid of spiders. So you can imagine how absolutely terrified I was when Frodo and Sam encountered the spider queen she loved. I've long since gotten over my fear of spiders, but that scene in that movie has stuck with me for a long time. So as a nod to one of my favorite scenes in Lord of the Rings, I'm going to make a monster miniature inspired by Shelob. And then in an upcoming bonus episode, I'm going to stat out a spider boss inspired by Shelob. But for today, I'm going to show you how I made the model. Let's get into it. I made this model on the cheap. The most expensive items were the Citadel skulls, and I did the math and I only used 39 cents worth. For the model itself, I used this rubber spider toy. Many of you have probably seen this at Dollar Tree on the shelves, some of you probably already picked it up. It's a pretty good looking spider, it's got good detail, but its most useful characteristic is that it's pliable. Because it's pliable, we can choose its pose, and it's my opinion that a pose of a miniature is one of the most, if not the most, important aspect. You can make a handcrafted monster with great detail, perfect proportions, but I think what takes it to that next level of immersion is having it in an action-packed, aggressive stance. That way, when you put it on the combat table, it looks like it's there in the scene, in motion, not just standing there. So with that in mind, I was trying to achieve that recognizable spider aggressive stance, where they rear back, put their front legs up, and flare their fangs. And I think I did a pretty good job of that. But enough of my talking, let's zoom into the table and let's make a terrifying spider boss. Alright, let's start with the materials list. So to start off, you're going to need XPS foam for your base, some wax dental floss, some foam pellets from Dollar Tree, some dryer sheets, but you're going to want to run them through the dryer before you use them, some puppy paint, some milliput, some citadel skulls, the spider from Dollar Tree of course, some sand, some medium rocks, and some small rocks. Both can be found at Dollar Tree. Now that the materials are ready to go, let's get into the craft. I started by sizing up the base. Typically I try to do the appropriate size for the game board, but with this I had to deviate from that. I started off with a circular base trying to match my other miniatures, and then trimmed down the depth to make it less bulky. Size looked just about right, but I started disliking the circular base. I decided to pivot and make the base as if it was a piece of terrain. That way, when I was constructing the pose of the spider, I could have it interacting with its environment. I thought that this would help bring the miniature to life, and I was really happy with the results. This will be clearly shown when I glue the spider to the base. To make sure I had enough room for the spider, I marked out where all the back feet would be glued. I then drew a rocky, irregular shape. I expanded the front of the base a few times so I'd have enough room to add details to the base. At this point the size looked pretty good so I could take it over to the proxon cutter and cut it out. To detail the sides, I just cut out chunks of the XPS foam and gave it a gradual slope. This method is shown by a lot of other content creators when they do their rocky crags. Then with great difficulty and spending a lot of time, I began cutting out a recess from the bottom. The idea was to fill this with washers to add some weight, but it's actually probably best that the base doesn't weigh much because you'll be picking this up by the spider. So this ended up being completely unnecessary but improvisation is part of the craft. I took a break from the base to make a poor unfortunate hole that's been caught by the spider. To do this, I used a mini for reference and drew the outline of a body. 
You can be crude with this because it's going to be wrapped in dental floss. I cut out the sketch and whittled it down to a more rounded shape. I had high points where the arms and the feet were, and then a low point where the legs were. And I cut out a head shape as well. Again, it's okay if it's crude. Here's the carved down piece. Very rudimentary, but the dental floss is going to round it out. Now for the pre-mentioned dental floss. I was a little trepidatious about using waxed floss because I was afraid the paint would bind to it. But after covering it in half and half of water and PVA glue, the paint binded to it just fine. And the wax actually helps it meld together, making it look like sticky web. Just keep wrapping till it looks right. I did two or three layers. If you want to make this look really good, you could sacrifice some miniature and leave some of it exposed. After I covered that in the PVA glue mixture, I set it aside and started working on the base again. I wanted a large rock that had a crevice in it where a spider might lay its eggs. So I used XPS foam to make one. For the rest of the rocks, I used actual rocks. After carving, I textured it with tin foil. After the large rock was secured with hot glue, I covered the entire thing in PVA glue. Be careful not to get it on the edges. You only want the top surface covered. I then placed the rocks, and then covered the whole thing in sand and let it dry. While that dried, I could work on the spider model. I started on the front legs. These are the legs that are going to be held up in that aggressive stance. To do so, I used super glue and baking soda to secure them to the body. I started with the baking soda, added super glue, and then layered it again with baking soda. This gave it a very strong bond. As I was doing this, I was careful to brush away any excess baking soda before adding super glue. I didn't want to add any unwanted texture. These sculpting tools are excellent for getting the right amount of baking soda. To make the spider more intimidating and more like Shelob, I added a stinger and some fangs. To make them, I constructed them out of milliput. I pulled the stinger off the body, let it dry, and reconnected it with super glue. But with the fangs, I had to blend them in with water and a sculpting tool. I started the fangs by making basic conical shapes. I then pressed them into the model tightly and blended it in with water and the sculpting tools. With the sharp point tool, I continued the fur pattern down and blended them in nicely with the model. A more blunt instrument could be used to shape the fangs and further meld them in with the model. And here's a better look at creating that fur pattern. Again, I damaged the fangs during the crafting process and they became much more curved and less visually prominent. It probably would have been best to set the model aside and let the milliput dry before I moved on. I wanted the model to have more than two eyes, so I cut off the ones that came with the model and used puffy paint to create more. I held the bottle straight up and down and added a small amount of paint. This created an almost perfect circular bump. I created two large ones at the front and two smaller ones on the sides, trying to keep them as symmetrical as possible. 
again, I should have let it dry because I kept fidgeting with the model and I screwed this up too along with the fangs, so I had to redo it. But on the bright side, if you make a circle that's not quite symmetrical, you can just wipe it away and try again. Puffy paint dries in about 4 hours. Once the milliput and puffy paint had dried, I could take the spider outside and black bomb it with spray paint. Speaking of mistakes, I usually don't work with white glue, so thinking I was going to seal in the sand, I mixed up water and PVA glue and applied it on the top, but this just rehydrated the glue on the bottom. I should have just went straight in with Mod Podge and black paint. Mod Podge isn't water soluble in the way that PVA glue is, so it didn't rehydrate the glue. Once both had dried, I covered both in a base coat of black acrylic paint. I find that this gives better coverage with other base coats, rather than just applying straight to Mod Podge or spray paint. To base the base, I used a mixture of tan and gray. I did two thin coats. While the base was drying, I dry brushed the spider with a warm white. This brought out all the details of that fur pattern, and I hit the very high edges with a pure white. While I was dry brushing, I avoided the fangs and the stinger. I also avoided the super glue and baking soda to obscure it. And because it's not highlighted, you can't even tell it's there, unless you look really, really closely. In the hard to reach places, I went in with a smaller makeup brush. Any white that I got on the stinger and fangs, I covered up with black paint. At the end of the project, I'd cover those in a gloss varnish. To add some visual interest and variance to the base, I painted the rocks in different variations of the base coat. I then stippled burnt sienna with a coarse brush. and then dry brushed and suede. For washes on the spider, I used Nuln Oil from Citadel and Agrax Earthshade as well. And for the base, I used my cheaper homemade ink washes. After the glue had dried on the cocoon, I painted it with a warm white. I then took it outside and sprayed it a few times with matte varnish. I could then apply the wash without it darkening the piece too much. It turned out somewhat dingy, but still white, and I really liked the results. I then moved on to applying the eggs. I used the foam pellets from Dollar Tree for the spider eggs because they're perfect round circles. To secure them, I used a little dab of white glue, which was a mistake. I should have used tacky glue because it would have dried faster. But even if it had been tacky glue, they're still precariously attached. So I went in with water and PVA glue and applied that in between the eggs to connect them to each other. Because I used the diluted PVA glue, there'd be no visible glue on the top, which was important when it came to painting because I want these to look like dry egg sacks. I had to work incredibly gingerly here, and it took forever for the glue to dry. After this project, I have to say, I'm not really a fan of working with white glue, but in this specific application, I think I didn't have a choice. While those dried, I connected the spider victim using tacky glue this time. When these are done, they're going to serve as two focal points at the front of the base of the miniature. I felt like this monster miniature was deserving of some citadel skulls. Now, I've seen a lot of people drill a hole and put these on a pin and paint them. I don't have the tools to do that. So after I spray painted them gray, I placed them on a piece of tape and then taped that to my cutting mat to make it taut. 
This way they don't slide around. And while you can't get the bottom of the skulls, they're going to be connected to the base anyway, so you're not going to see any spots you missed. I used Reaper miniature paint on these. I base coated them in desert sand and then highlighted them with off-white. It was a lot of fun placing these. I ended up putting one in the pile of egg sacks just for added flavor. For the eggs, I painted them with linen by full cart. I forgot to mention earlier, I also added some dead grass tufts. Once everything was attached and dried, I went in with a sepia wash on the skulls and in the creases between the eggs. To prep the used dryer sheets, I ripped them out in roughly trapezoidal shapes. I then carefully frayed the edges with my fingers. To make it look natural, you put the smaller end of the trapezoid towards the top and then the larger end on the bottom. I would anchor a piece with a drop of super glue. I would then apply white glue with outward strokes with the brush. This would carry the strands away from the center of the web. The mixture of this with the trapezoidal shape makes it really look like web. I took both pieces outside and gave them a few coats of Krylon's matte varnish. With both pieces done, I could finally attach the spider to the base. Going back to my previous discussions about the pose, I wanted to interact with this environment. So I super glued the back feet to the very edge of the piece as if it was climbing up. I then put one leg on top of the rock. Another leg went on top of the base and then the rest of the front leg stayed up in the air in that aggressive stance. And with that, my Shelob inspired spider boss miniature was done, and I was super happy with the results, and I had a lot of fun making it as well. Well, that's it for today. As always, that YouTube stuff, if you haven't yet subscribed, consider doing so. I got more videos on the way. If you found this video inspiring, entertaining, or informative, consider hitting that like button as well. If you'd like to support the channel and pick up some materials that I use in the videos, I have some Amazon links in the description below. It's at no cost to you, but it helps me out with a small commission. But until next time, thanks for watching, and keep on crafting.